Hey everyone, this is Chris with another episode of The Setup. In this setup, I'm going to take you on a tour of Death Valley National Park and take you behind the scenes of the adventure we took trying to capture the Milky Way reflecting off the pools in Badwater Basin. For this adventure, I was able to recruit a crew, my brother, a friend, and the most important member of our team, a van from Van Craft Rentals. This is a Mercedes Sprinter van converted into a camper van that had anything you could possibly ask for and need on an adventure such as this. This custom built van is fully off grid, equipped with solar panels, running water, a pop up tent, fully functioning kitchen with a stove, oven, fridge, and sink. It can fit up to six adults and travel through any terrain. It was perfect for this rugged kind of trip. First off, Death Valley is an amazing place for any photographer. It's the largest national park in the continuous United States. Death Valley is part of the Mojave Desert and one of the harshest climates, holding the hottest recorded temperature of 134 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's best to visit in the winter or early spring when the temperatures are more manageable during the day. For this setup, we headed to Death Valley at the end of February because this is the time of year when the Milky Way finally returns in the night sky. We also planned on shooting in Death Valley because it's a certified dark sky park. This means there is little to no light pollution so you can see the infinite amount of stars in the sky. You can look up other dark sky parks near you by visiting the International Dark Sky Association website, darksky.org. If you don't live near a national park, you can use the website or app Astrophiric to look for areas near you that have little light pollution. I also love Astrophiric because it gives you hourly forecasts of cloud cover, transparency, seeing, wind, temperature, and dew point, all of which are essential for astrophotography. For this adventure, I had two images in my mind that I wanted to capture. Star trails in the Mesquite Flat Sand Dunes, and the Milky Way rising over the Badwater Basin. We had two nights to visit Death Valley, and unfortunately there was rain in the forecast on our first night, so my hopes weren't too high about capturing star trails in the sand dunes. There are several entrances to the park, but we chose the east entrance because of its close proximity to the sand dunes. Plus, on the way to this entrance there are some killer hills on the highway with no one for miles and miles. Once entering the park, you'll run into the stovetop Wells Village. Here you can stock up on essentials at the market or restaurant and book a night at the hotel or find a spot in the camp. But be sure to register at the ranger station no matter what. Once you're ready to explore the park, the Mesquite Flat Sand Dunes are only a couple miles from stovetop Wells. We got there in the afternoon and headed out right away to scout out a location for shooting the stars at night and hopefully capture a nice sunset. The dunes are really large and vast, so what looks like a short distance ends up being a very long hike because of the continuous up and down through the shifting sands. Be sure to bring plenty of water and a headlamp. If you're heading out for a sunset shot, you will surely be making your way back in the dark, and it's really easy to get lost. After scouting out the dunes, we headed back to the van to get some rest. The forecast for the night was not looking good, but we woke up at 1am anyways to see if we could get lucky with a break in the clouds. And once we made our way out there, we had no such luck. In fact, it started raining, so we scurried our way back to the van as quickly as possible. On our way back, we ran into a famous photographer, Timothy Walcott. I told him my plan to capture star reflections from the pools of Badwater Basin, and he suggested an even better location for us to check out. Hey everyone, so we're out here in the Salt Flats in Death Valley scouting out for tonight's Milky Way shot. We're here with some really stormy weather. We got some rain last night. We've got a rainstorm on its way this direction, but the water has produced absolutely incredible reflections. Really excited. Hopefully we can get some clear skies and get the Milky Way and some star trails, but God, I'm just blown away at how clear, how flat, how reflective this is. It's gonna be a pretty awesome night. After scouting, we are going to stop at some of the most iconic locations in the park, starting with Zabreski Point. 
This is a famous spot for hiking and photography, which can be shot from any angle. It's best to visit during sunrise or sunset. Just be ready for the crowds. However, it's really easy to get your own spot by hiking throughout the area. Our next stop was Artist Drive and Artist Palette. This is exactly what it sounds like, an incredible array of colorful earth. These colors are caused by the oxidation of different metals in the rocks of these hills. This is a great spot to visit after a rain or during blue hour just after the sun has set because the moisture allows the minerals to really pop and contrast. We only spend a few minutes here because we also wanted to scout out Badwater Basin before the sunset. Badwater Basin is only a short drive from Artist Palette. It's also the lowest point in North America and is a giant salt flat. Once you arrive at Badwater Basin, you need to park and walk about a mile before you're really surrounded by the unique salt flats of this location. After the recent rainfall, these formations collect water and almost turn into a mirror. We were stoked to see that this is exactly what we were hoping for, and we played around in the pools for a while until it got dark. The forecast was predicted to clear around 2 a.m., so we set our alarms and woke up around 1. The skies were mostly clear, so we returned to the first salt flats we scouted out earlier in the day. Unfortunately, in this area of the park, there was no break in clouds and we could not find the still pools that we scouted out earlier. We decided to abort and head back to Badwater Basin. When we arrived, I sprinted out to the salt pools and set up my tripod. After about 20 minutes of shooting a time lapse, my wish was granted and we got to see the Milky Way and its grandeur reflecting on the salt pools of Badwater Basin. I was so stoked to see my plan turn into a reality. I played around with my 15mm and 20mm wide angle lenses. Wide angle lenses are great for astrophotography because they can capture a wide field of landscape and stars. In shooting stars, you also want to be shooting with lenses that have a fast aperture. For night photography, you need lenses that can open up to 2.8 or more, and you need long exposures to capture all the stars out there. We had a blast playing in the pools and shooting different compositions until sunrise. By first light, other photographers were showing up and I could see why. This area turned into an incredible scene that did not look anything like the hottest place on earth. This was one of the few moments where I actually enjoyed being surrounded by other photographers to capture this rare event. Everyone was extremely respectful and kept out of each other's frames and had a whole lot of fun. There were smiles everywhere because everyone felt this was probably going to be a once in a lifetime experience. Thanks for tuning in and we hope to see you next time on The Setup.